This is an overview of the antibiotic called clindamycin. Clindamycin is a lincosamide antibiotic. It was developed in 1966 by chemically modifying the naturally occurring structure of lincomycin. Clindamycin is considered more effective than lincomycin and has fewer toxic effects. This semisynthetic antibiotic is superior in antimicrobial activity than lincomycin. It is better absorbed following oral administration and maintains a higher serum drug concentration. Clindamycin works by binding to 50S ribosomal subunit of bacteria. This results in the inhibition of RNA-dependent protein synthesis. This agent exerts a prolonged post-antibiotic effect. It can decrease toxin production and increase microbial opsonization and phagocytosis even at sub-inhibitory concentrations. Clindamycin is bacteriostatic against several aerobic gram-positive cocci including some staphylococci and streptococci, and a wide variety of anaerobes. Doctors use clindamycin to treat a variety of bacterial infections. Clindamycin can be used to treat deep soft tissue infections, anaerobic lung infections, intra-abdominal infections, as well as gynecological infections. Clindamycin is an alternative to penicillin for dental infections. Clindamycin has a role in the treatment of head and neck infections, bone and joint infections, and is considered effective for various skin infections. The usual oral adult dosage of clindamycin is 300 to 450 mg every 8 hours for 7 days. The maximum dose of clindamycin, when given orally, is 600 mg every 8 hours. Clindamycin is also formulated as a 1% topical solution. When used topically to treat acne vulgaris, this solution can be applied twice a day for a period of 2 to 6 weeks. Clindamycin 2% intravaginal cream is recommended for the treatment of bacterial vaginosis. In this case one applicatorful is inserted into the vagina, at bedtime for a period of 7 days. A gel containing clindamycin 1% and benzoyl peroxide 5% is available for the topical treatment of acne vulgaris. When using this gel, a thin film should be applied in the evening for a maximum of 11 weeks. Another gel used in the treatment of acne vulgaris is called Actanac. This gel contains 1% clindamycin combined with 0.025% tretinoin. When using this gel, a small amount should be applied once daily at night for a period of 12 weeks or less. This should be done after the affected area is cleaned with mild soap and dried. The side effects of clindamycin vary based on how it's administered. The most common side effects experienced with topical use include sun sensitivity, itchiness, redness, burning, and oily skin. With intravaginal administration, the most common side effects are vaginal candidiasis, vulvovaginal disease and vulvovaginitis. The primary adverse effects of clindamycin with systemic administration are nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. This is a result of clindamycin destroying much of the normal gut flora. 
Diarrhea has been reported in up to 20% of patients receiving clindamycin. However this effect is self-limited and resolves with discontinuation of the drug. Clindamycin also has a bitter taste when it is used orally. More severe adverse reactions include colitis and anaphylactic shock. The major toxicity of clindamycin, which has limited its use, is the occurrence of pseudomembranous colitis. Antibiotic-associated colitis and other super-infections, may occur several weeks after clindamycin therapy. This infection occurs in 2-10% of patients who receive the drug. This germ can lead to symptoms ranging from mild to severe diarrhea, to a potentially fatal toxic megacolon. Interestingly, the infection is more frequently seen in females and elderly, and is not dose-related. Clindamycin should be avoided in patients with a history of ulcerative colitis, or those with a known history of antibacterial-associated colitis. In patients with hepatic impairment, the half-life of clindamycin can be extended, and doses should be reduced accordingly. Clindamycin should also be used cautiously in elderly who are less likely to tolerate diarrhea. <laughs> 